Hey buddy, how you doing? I know, I know, you don't want to go out there. It's been like a monsoon for the last couple of hours. But we've milked this long enough, we got to get going. It's going to be a rough day, but don't worry, I'm going to be right there with you, and I know you have my back too. And then somewhere later on tonight, we'll go and dry out, okay? We've got to go do this. All right, let's get it done. Put it in there, buddy. Yeah. It's a wet one. Been raining hard since about three, maybe two in the morning. I kept falling back to sleep and everything, so that's good. But uh, about five, five thirty, I was up, ready to go. But I was also trying to wait for it to calm down a bit uh, before I head out. So it's supposed to come to a stop at some point uh, during my day today. Uh, it's going to be a shorter day. Not necessarily an easier day, though. It's about 14 miles, uh, over 4,000 feet of elevation. The majority of that right in the beginning, the first eight miles or so. Climbing up out of the NOC. And uh, then I will be staying uh, where I stayed last year uh, when I went through Fontana. Uh, right off of Stokoa Gap. A gentleman named Lonnie has a house there that he uses as a hostel, family home. He's staying there tonight. And again, in case you didn't see yesterday's video, I'm doing this intentionally over these couple days, shorter miles, because I'm timing it to where I get to the Smokies on a dry day, because there'll be about five really nice days in a row. That way I can pound through there and not have to, you know, worry about the water turning to ice or anything with the cold temps. So it'll definitely help. So. If it would have been way out of the grasp, I wouldn't have done this, but since I just had to really slow down and cut one day into two days, that's easy enough to do. So that's what I'm doing. But a big climb ahead of me here. So don't know how much I'll be able to show on videos today uh, because of the rain, but at some point it will clear up. Hopefully by the time I get to Cheola Bald. Hopefully I'm saying that right. All right, let's continue on. Looks like the rain has come to an end for now at least. I think I've climbed about a thousand feet so far. Still about four thousand or so to go. Hear a dog down there. I think it's coming from that house. Check that out. That's gorgeous. Fog up there where I'm climbing. Yeah, probably get some really good views of the fog and some clouds. Maybe I'll get above the clouds. Uh, by the time I get to the bald. Very swampy out here. Quite warm, actually. But, uh, wet. <laughs> not flooded or anything, so I'm not having any problems there or too bad of mud. Man, that is just gorgeous right there. I don't know if you could see that at the top of that. Trees coming out in the fog and clouds. It's gorgeous. Smokies, I'm coming, please be kind, I love to summit, but soon I'll be 49, but I'll take whatever you may give, 
Cause I promised this life I'm gonna live. Smokies, with all due respect, you're mine. Absolutely beautiful in this tunnel of rhododendrons. Even if it was sunny out, I don't know that you would know it. It's so thick in here. This here blowdown just got more hugging from me than my wife has gotten from me in the last 10 days. <laughs> kind of sucks. <laughs> I went to roll over that thing and my legs wouldn't reach either side once I was up on top. <laughs> so I'm just laying there hugging a slimy, muddy, mossy, wet bark blowdown. <laughs> it was cold too, on top of the wet and slimy. So now not only do I smell like a wet dog, <laughs> But my pants look like a wet dog. My hair already looked like a wet dog. I'm wet. I'm slimy. And then underneath, I'm all sweaty. So it's a beautiful sight. But that's okay. I wouldn't change it for anything right now. Because it's freaking awesome. I mean, I wouldn't mind giving my baby a really nice long hug, though. And a kiss. I miss you, baby. <laughs> Very slimy rocks right now. The big question is whether the rocks are the slimiest and slipperiest, or if it's the roots, or if it's the leaves. Or if it's a combination of all three, obviously you gotta throw ice in there too. But there's no ice around right now, at least around me. Uh, but yeah, those rocks are slippery. They're more slippery up north for some reason. But they're pretty slippery right now because they had a drenching last night for sure and over the last couple days. But those roots are pretty darn slippery too. When you go to step on them, your foot can just slide like it's ice. So you gotta be careful on all of it. And the leaves, well, they have a mind of their own. They slide wherever they want, but then also they cover up other things that could be slippery underneath. <laughs> and these branches right there were made for people that were like four foot two. <laughs> so like bending all the way down to get underneath those. Low lying clouds with some mountains peeking through. Looks pretty cool. Wish I could see the summits. Can a little bit over here. Just follow the leaf. <laughs> Looks pretty cool. Not quite up to the bald yet. Might get some really good views up there on top of the clouds. I don't know. Moving on. 
Because they do get out of breath sometimes. <laughs> that last little hump was really steep. And the trees slash bushes were really low. <laughs> so, walking like this and really steep. Definitely uh, played a number on me for a quarter to a half a mile there. I love that feeling. You know, a lot of people don't like this climb out of the NOC and complain about it. I live for this. <laughs> this is my kind of thing here. Climbing that mountain and the tougher it is, the more the reward when you're standing on top of it knowing you put another burden, another trouble, another obstacle underneath your feet and in the bag. I live for this, for sure. This climb is awesome. I think I'm about 2,700 up right now, or 2,700 feet of elevation so far. Got another 1,000 to 1,500 more to go. And then it's, uh, well, I think another 1,000, and they'll be on top of the bald. And then I think it dip, takes a dip down, then goes up another summit. And then... Uh, somewhat cruisy to uh, the end of my day at Stokoa Gap so through the worst part <laughs> I mean it's constant up but that last one was just really steep but man like I said I live for this The rain is back. Not too heavy yet, but uh, I definitely picked up in the last couple minutes. Kind of laying off right now, but it'll probably be back. There's some definitely, I'm inside a big rain or precipitation cloud right now, so it might rain on me here going up this last thousand feet or so, kind of like it did before the knock. But uh, trying to put this phone away so it stays nice and dry. I'll show you the views when they're there. Standing on the summit of Cheoa Bald. I hope I am pronouncing that correctly. It's all socked in with fog. You can see a little bit of the trees there, but not the mountains. But if you look up there in the sky, the sun does look like it's trying to burn through the fog. Kind of like the sweat is trying to burn through my eyeballs. <laughs> that last mile up to the bald was pretty darn steep and with the water on me from the rain weighing me down <laughs> probably extra weight i don't really know <laughs> it's my excuse <laughs> it was definitely a good tough climb and uh like i said i live for it even those times when i feel like i'm dying i live for it <laughs> but i am happy to say that teoa bald is in the bag Standing on the summit of Mount Possible, the last mountain before diving down into Stokoa Gap. Elevation 3,881, all things are possible. A smaller mountain, but a big push nonetheless, as it was 500 feet and half a mile, so about a 22% grade. All socked in with the fog, so you can't really see too much. But Mount Possible is in the bag. Got myself in here to Lonnie's Hostel. I believe it's called Wolf Creek. Uh, pretty sure it's called Wolf Creek. I'd have to look it up, but going on my memory. <laughs> uh, in the kitchen here, getting ready to uh, cook me up some beef and some beans. Mm -mm -mm. Lots of iron, lots of fiber. Lots of protein, all the things my body desires. Uh, give me a quick rundown here of the house. I'm the only one here right now. This is like the living common area. Here's a bedroom in here. Another bedroom here. And another bedroom here. Real nice homey place, a little gas station out there in front for some resupply. 
dining room computer and laptop, which I will be needing to print out my Smokies permit. And then in here is the laundry, which I am doing currently. And another room here and back here is where I'm going to be staying. Lucky what I found. A piano. Another, <laughs> another uh, bathroom there. So a real nice place. Um, really cool when you're the only one here. That's awesome. Uh, but I'm going to continue on making my dinner. And if you wonder what in the heck is fortune wearing, if you don't know anything about loner clothes, let me tell you. It is some of the funnest parts of the trip. <laughs> okay, maybe not the funnest, but it's really cool. So this here are all clothes that have been donated or just kept over the years. And when you're doing your laundry, because you don't obviously take two or three <laughs> changes of clothes, you have one change of clothes. That's how you save weight. Uh, you know, I, I wear layers, so I have a couple base layer shirts and pants because sometimes I wear both of them, just depending on how cold it is. Uh, and they're very lightweight too. They're nothing fleece or thick or anything like that. I left the water running. Let it warm up so I could wash a pan and <laughs> just kept it running. I wonder what that noise was. But these are loner clothes. So that's kind of the fun thing. Like, oh, let's see what I'm going to wear today. Well, today I felt like wearing this sweatshirt. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to make my beef and beans. Finish up the laundry, have everything ready, get my permit printed out for the Smokies. Probably have some coffee. I bought some stuff at the store for breakfast in the morning. Waffles and a bacon Jimmy Dean breakfast bowl. And some coffee and watching the weather. Uh, because I'm not going to be going into the Smokies tomorrow, but I do have about 12 to 14 miles uh, to get to the edge. Uh, but it's supposed to be thunderstorming all day tomorrow, so I need to watch it and figure out what I'm going to do. I might end up staying here one more day. Uh, I don't know that I would take it as a zero, though. I would probably just go walk that 12, 14, and then come back here, unless it's just really bad all day long with like lightning and such. I don't, don't want to be out in that. Uh, but I wouldn't be starting for a couple days anyway uh, the day after tomorrow in the Smokies, uh, that's what I've been kind of waiting on because that's when it's going to be clear out. That's why I'm doing only like 14 mile days. Today was a 14 mile day, by the way, 4,300 feet of elevation. I was soaking wet in and out. <laughs> when I say in and out, I mean on the outside from the rain, on the inside from my sweat. <laughs> it was quite miserable. But I'm here now and I'm going to have me some warm food and I will see you all in the manana. <laughs> Live life. Smokies, I'm coming, please be kind. I love to summon, but I'll soon be forty nine. But I'll take Anything that you give Cause I promised This life I'm gonna live Smokies with respect You are mine Smokies with respect You are mine 